Oh, hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on tracking returnable assets to drive supply chain efficiency. My name is Lorna Melia, and I'm the marketing manager here at Barcodes. Today, Tim Harvey, CEO and president of TrackX, will be discussing how RFID tags and sensor data can drive business intelligence and improve inventory visibility. We do have a Q&A feature available on this webinar, so please feel free to write down any questions, and we'll address these towards the end as time allows. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tim. Tim, it's all yours. Uh, thank you, Warren. My apologies for the little technical difficulty with our audio. Hopefully you can uh, hear me now. Um, and I'd like to thank Barcos for their effort in pulling together this webinar and allowing TrackX the opportunity to speak about to this uh, this audience regarding returnable assets, the challenges that the industry faces with the management of returnable assets, and how TrackX is delivering solutions across a wide variety of industries in conjunction with barcodes to drive supply chain efficiency for these for these accounts. Um, uh, I'll begin by sharing with you a little bit about what we we refer to as being returnable assets. These are these transportation assets that are really important for companies and necessary to move inventory and consumer goods through the supply chain and through all their supply chain partners. Today, we're, we're, we're doing work in managing such assets as oil and gas containers, beer kegs for companies like Anheuser-Busch, chemical containers, intermediate bulk containers, um, agricultural bins, horticultural racks, bakery racks, and many, many, many more. If you think about the, the, the need for, for returnable, collapsible containers, it's growing and every industry pretty much has uh, an issue with trying to manage the float of returnable assets necessary to maintain efficiency and ultimately get, get products to, uh, to the retailers and to the consumers. So the challenge really is, is that, look, our, our economy is becoming more global and that's leading to very expansive, very complex supply chains. These have traditionally been managed by a lot of manual processes which are prone to error error and, 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 and frankly very ineffective in being able to capture real-time data necessary to drive business intelligence and optimization of these assets. The shrink loss and theft is, is certainly on the rise. One of the things that we've learned from our years in supply chain experience is that as if in fact returnable transport items like beer kegs or, or plastic pallets, if they're sitting idle and they're not moving through the supply chain, they're much more subject to loss and theft. Part of what we want to do is, is keep those, those assets in motion. That reduces the, the opportunity for them to get stolen. Along with increased transportation costs and fuel costs, we, we, have, to, we have to be more cognizant of how to manage empty backhaul lanes. Um, there is certainly a need with our customers to drive supply chain accountability. Which supply chain partner had an asset? How does that asset impact the, um, the inventory on that asset? Walmart had shared with us that they lose $99 million plus dollars a year just in egg breakage. It's difficult for them to hold other customers accountable because they're, or partners accountable because they don't know at what point in the supply chain those eggs were broken. By being able to track the returnable assets and being able to track impact or temperature or other issues with these returnable assets, customers are able to hold their supply chain partners accountable. Um, there's an increase in regulatory and compliance mandates. There's much, much more focus on food safety and uh, pedigree tracking and provenance. Um, and there's increased pressure for companies uh, to, 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 to really be more green and utilize returnable collapsible containers. And the issues that we see are if you're not able to manage these, these assets effectively, then we have, we see longer cycle times. We see these assets not able to be utilized to the maximum potential. If it, within the brewery industry, to use that again as an example, we often see turn rates of, of about three times a year for a beer keg that costs, costs $130. Um, that's not really a very sufficient um, turn rate on assets that could turn twice that many times. We see companies as a result of their inability to get access to assets, uh, some, some of their various departments are hoarding those assets, so they're, they're available to them when they need them. We see supply chain bottlenecks as a result in getting inventory to customers, inefficient product recalls, inability to find, to find product and to find assets um, when, when, there's a, when there's a recall on a food product. We, we saw some of the big, op, big uh, liability and concerns regarding lettuce and other produce. Well, if we could track some of the returnables, we have a better opportunity to understand where that product went. 
the, the delay in order and order fulfillment, and certainly the increased transportation costs I mentioned prior, uh, are, are, are really growing concerns for a much, much more um, broader industry segment. And the economic impact, this is an interesting picture. This is a, this is a photo of, of how we see some of these plastic containers being used and, uh, and, and broken wooden pallets, which are, to me, in, in, you know, bacterial incubators. They're difficult to sanitize, difficult to repair, and uh, frankly need an awful lot of maintenance in order to keep them in operation. There's redundant asset procurement costs. If you're not able to manage the assets you have effectively, many companies end up having to purchase many more assets than they really need. So there's redundant, there's redundant capital costs there. Increasing labor hours and increasing labor costs become a, a big issue for companies trying to find those assets or trying to move product without having the right number of assets. We have many companies, some of which I'll mention here in a minute, that, that, um, that have large fleets of assets that they rent to other, uh, to other um, supply chain partners. That results in a loss of, uh, of rental income if they're unable to fulfill an order or they're unable to prove that they actually have shipped those rental assets to one of their customers. Um, there's, in, in some of our transportation accounts, excess storage and detention charges for using containers or trailers that, that we can help that we can help resolve all of these opportunities um, are, are, are now uh, are now the, the solution to these up to these challenges and, and the solution to these problems is now achievable given technology and solutions like that offered by by barcodes and by track X um, the, we also see a lot of customer service issues if customers don't get products in time or you can't respond to a question around where is my stuff then uh, you, you have a dissatisfied customer, right? And obviously lost inventory, production inefficiencies, uh, and quality assurance become, become issues that, that concern every manufacturer that's trying to get product to their customers. In terms of production inefficiencies, we're working with one brewery again, and, 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 and that brewery had, had, told, had shared with us that their fill lines go down about 20% of the time because they don't have kegs to keep them operating. So there's some very, very significant significant opportunity to, to, to pull some of the, these, these solutions out of the supply chain to drive real value, to drive a very rapid ROI um, with, with the technologies that are now available to these enterprises. At a glance, you can see that within the returnable transport industries or within that segment of the industry around returnable transport items that we have billions our transport items in circulation around the world. The average cost of these, in our in our estimation, is about $185 per returnable transport item. Shrink loss and theft, if you look at various industries, pretty much averages between six and 14% um, across the board, across all the industries that we've, we've managed returnable transport items within. And we see 15% of the capital budgets allocated to the returnable transport item fleets are actually spent on just replacing the assets that they can't find or have been lost or stolen, right? Along with that, you have this increase in transportation costs. Fuel prices, as I mentioned, are going up. We have tremendous pressure environmentally to make sure we, we stay green. We have um, issues with, with, with product provenance that's growing day in and day out now. We, we read about it in the news every day, the issues around food safety and, uh, and a product authentication. And certainly those regulatory and compliance mandates are driving now an increased adoption of our returnable transport item programs and solutions, right? Now we, we have internet, uh, the Internet of Things and significant acceptance invest, or investment acceptance around the Internet of Things. We see sensors declining um, for various various types of data, including impact, temperature, light, humidity. We see the cost of RFID tags that are being used at a much more, uh, a much broader scale now, decreasing significantly. And the capabilities of that hardware is increasing significantly. When we first started tracking beer kegs, and I, I'll tell you, we did that about 20 years ago, the cost of a tag on a beer keg ran about $11. The cost now on uh, some of these returnable transport items to, to be able to track them is less than two dollars with, with a tag that that is impervious to to damage. So these solutions are now able to deliver significant value to our customers. 
They're able to, to, to leverage hardware that, although it's been around for a while, has increased in significant capacity and capability and decreased in price at, at, uh, by, by about 90% of what it was 15, 20 years ago. So we, we're now at a point where the solutions and the, the, for these companies are very, very approachable. To deliver a rapid ROI, I will share with you that our average ROI for our customers now is uh, is less than eight and a half months. So with that type of a payback, we look at this between barcodes and Tradex saying, hey, our solutions don't cost. They actually pay you money. We build them on a, re on a software as a service subscription basis. So once the hardware is covered, the, the value you're getting out of these solutions is is month to month incremental to your bottom line. So just to share with you a couple examples of the work we've done over the past few years, um, one of them is one of the projects we embarked on was a project with a, a, a very, very um, progressive company called Container Centralian. They're, uh, they're based out of Europe. Um, they have a lot, large presence in the United States. They're the a company that owns and leases to growers and nurseries all of the horticultural racks that you buy plants off of when you walk into Home Depot or Lowe's and Walmart this time of year to, to make your front yard look nice. So as you're buying those plants, all those racks you know, are, are moved from a depot in response to grower or nursery orders to a grower. There, We track plants using solar-powered readers and antennas directly out of the field. We're able to maintain the flow of those racks to their distribution centers and from those distribution centers to upwards of 40,000 retail locations and back from those retail locations to the depot so they can be so they can be reallocated and rented to new growers. So as that process happens, you know, there's there there historically had been a big problem with reconciling how much how, how many how many racks I sent to nursery ABC and how many racks I got back from ABC. The nursery would say, "Well, I think I only had you know, 500 received, and the, the container saying, well, I think I sent you 1,000, and there's this ongoing battle around what, what was actually sent, what was actually received, and what's still being used by the grower. With a solution like that offered by, by Barcodes and TrackX, we're able to track all those racks, and now we're, uh, we're, uh, we're managing about a, a rate around a million of these on a day-to-day on -a -day basis to help, to help drive efficiencies within the supply chain. As a result, increased in, there's a significant increase in rental income, obviously. We're able to put racks back into the supply chain more effectively. There has been 80 plus percent reduction in accounts receivable. No, no more um, teams negotiating and discussing the what was shipped versus what was received. We have transactions that prove that. We have a lot more customer satisfaction because of the ability to fill orders. We've got to reduce labor costs in managing inventory and managing transportation. Very significant uh, utilization of the solution to track a very important returnable transport item that has a value of about $180. So um, that's one of the projects we, uh, we, we've, we've implemented. Another is with a large provider of dairy and cheese containers. And in this particular customer site, we, we tag all these containers with RFID. They're using uh, fixed readers within the within their their maintenance and processing environments and and uh, distribution facilities and handheld units in the field for supply chain visibility, right? Through um, through the use of our solutions, we were able and they're using a a passive RFID uh, tag on these containers versus Container Centralian. They were using a, a more expensive but more um, uh, more capable active tag. In fact, it may be one of the largest active tag implementations in the country. Arena is using a lesser cost tag, receiving some of the same benefits, automating the billing process, creating a significant reduction in labor, making sure that they have properly maintained dairy and cheese containers available to fill orders, um, managing their, 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 their actual maintenance scheduling and maintenance uh, services, and, and holding their supply chain partners accountable to get those racks back to them when they're when they're emptied, so that they can put them back into distribution again. Um, very progressive company, very strong implementation. Again, of a of frankly exactly the same platform as we implemented for another asset in the horticultural industry. Right. One of the things that I hope you leave this presentation with today is an understanding that we 
through the technologies available by, by barcodes and by the solution platform available from TrackX, we're able to address returnable transport item tracking across pretty much any industry. Many of the requirements are the same, whether we're tracking a pallet or a beer keg or a horticultural rack. Another example is with a company that most of you will be familiar with called Anheuser-Busch. This is where we're tracking beer kegs. I mentioned it earlier in the presentation. Their challenge is, you know, they've well over 4 million beer kegs. Um, you know, those, those kegs carry the, their most precious product, beer. They're concerned from everything about making sure that their customers understand the quality of the product and, and that their customers are drinking the freshest product in the, in the brewery and in the retail location, all the way to making sure that the fill lines continue to function efficiently. So managing those beer kegs is extremely important. For Anheuser-Busch, um, we're putting an RFID tag, again, a passive tag, on the inside chime of the beer keg. Readers at the dock doors, the fill lines, and the empty and full storage will track inventory. We'll be able to track not only how many beer kegs went to a distributor, but which specific beer kegs went to a distributor. So we can then hold our the distributors accountable. We can ensure that the, the quality of the product is maintained. We can increase turn rates and, and reduce dwell time within their supply chain, um, within, the, within their overall supply chain. And, and we're even able now to provide their retail and marketing guys with pertinent information around the, uh, not just the, 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 the whereabouts of a beer keg, but the, the, the born on date or potential issues with quality at the retail location. All of this is in scope for Anheuser-Busch. Again, um, uh, all, and again, all built on the same product, the same platform, same solution that Barcodes and TrackX is implementing for other other companies within the uh, within the returnable transport um, area focus. So that's just a couple examples, and we could we certainly ha ha happy to answer any questions on other assets, including chemical containers and air and gas cylinders and synthetic rubber bins for the tire industry, etc. But I thought I'd spend a few minutes and share with you a little bit more around what TrackX specifically is all about. And, and so um, to answer that question, who was TrackX? TrackX is a, is a, is a, a public entity um, uh, that's been around the industry for a, for a long time. We provide solutions to larger enterprises to help them track and manage physical assets, leveraging the uh, unique item level tracking and certainly the emerging world of uh, IoT or Internet of Things technologies and sensors. We assign tags to, to these uh, high-valued assets. We, uh, we manage a network of readers, antennas, and mobile devices to collect data from those tagged assets and move that information up into our cloud-based platform where we are able to take that massive amount of data and all the attributes around those assets into the cloud, provide uh, business workflow, event management, alert notification to help drive business process and improvements and efficiencies to our customers. Ultimately, taking that data either uh, at an operational level or historical data and running a very strong predictive analytics uh, capability that's built into our platform and the being able to help companies or offering companies a way in which to look at that data in ways that they've never been able to before because they've never had access to this data to, 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 um, to look at it this way before. So, and then to further add value, when you see an orange circle on the right that says integrate. Companies have spent tens of millions of dollars on their back end ERP manufacturing and warehousing systems. The challenge is how can we help those customers extract even more value from that significant investment. If we're really the catalyst for capturing real-time data around assets and transportation and labor through the supply chain, then our ability then to integrate into SAP and Oracle and Manhattan and all of your other back-end systems is important because not only do we give you real-time data, but we allow, allow the customer to more effectively utilize the capabilities of those platforms, unlocking, unlocking the significant, you know, a very significant value from the investments they've made in those back-end systems. So that's a little bit about who TrackTex is. Why are companies picking us? Um, we have a platform affectionately called GAME, or Global Asset Management for Enterprises. 
It's enterprise scalable to support multiple enterprise locations, asset flows, and workflows um, for our customers. We're not a hardware company. We, uh, we work with all, all the, the widely accepted tag and sensor providers, the reader and, uh, and mobile providers, and we work very closely with barcodes, obviously, to grab that, uh, or to get our hands around not just existing technology, but understand where, where technology is going so we can stay abreast of that and become our, our customers' trusted advisor for the selection of technology to most effectively meet not just one of your asset tagging initiatives, but all of them. And uh, so for those customers that see asset management as a core strategic initiative, we become a very strong fit, being hardware agnostic, being able to utilize multiple um, tags and tagging technologies simultaneously to track your wide variety of assets, being able to associate business workflows, events, and alerts uh, to manage your business process and, and uh, drive uh, proactive notifications when things aren't going through the supply chain as you would intend them to go. And then we have this tight integration with your back-end systems and a predictive analytics platform that drives further operational efficiencies, supports regulatory compliance, and in every case, we're not looking to just sell you technology. We're looking to drive a rapid ROI and significant value to your organization. So we are truly, for our large customers, the platform that helps them enable IoT digital transformation and their big data initiatives. We do that by really focusing on three areas. The assets we manage are high value assets, and that could be laptops and IT assets for companies like Geico Insurance. It could be um, trucks and trailers and, and yard activity for companies like GE Appliance. Um, it could be a manufacturing, uh, you know, um, uh, work in process and uh, warehouse inventory or tools track tool tracking a lot of lab equipment we do for companies like Juniper Networks we have a focused and returnable assets which we're talking about today um, and we also have a, a focus in industrial assets in fact when I talk about GE appliance that's really uh, much more of an industrial asset management implementation to track their trucks trailers forklifts um, construction equipment and manage a lot of their secure entry and exit gates so High value assets, returnable assets, and industrial assets gives us a pretty, a pretty repeatable solution to help companies address a wide variety of their asset management initiatives. The key benefits you get with our, with our, our offering from barcodes and TrackX is obviously improved asset visibility. You know where your assets are at all times. You get improved product quality if you can manage the asset. We can do a much better job of helping you manage the inventory on those assets. You get a, um, an elimination of strength, loss, and theft. Our goal is to provide a deterrent to people that would normally steal these assets. We are able to help you keep them moving so that they don't sit idle, that dwell times don't allow the opportunity for theft, and that if they do get stolen, you know that they're missing sooner than you otherwise would such that you have a chance to find them. That's, that's been the issue. You know, if something gets stolen in the supply chain today, most companies won't know about it until they do their next inventory a year later. That doesn't help you solve the problem, and you're probably by then not going to find those assets. And the other thing that we really do here is provide um, accountability, allow you as customers to be able to, to manage your supply chain and know that you're able to hold your partners accountable for where your high-value assets and the important revenue generating inventory that's on those assets is at any time in your supply chain. With that, you're gonna improve customer service and you're gonna improve brand protection and your loyalty programs with customers, ultimately um, driving significant value for, for the enterprise. All of that, obviously, I mentioned, I, I missed improved cycle time. Clearly, if we're managing assets, you're gonna be able to improve your turn rates around those assets. So, the highlights for us, and. It, it really that when you're working with barcodes and, and track X, you're working with, with companies that have a, a large number of Fortune 500 clients already installed. Uh, this is not new technology. It's been around for a while. It's much more affordable. It's much more powerful. And it's now uh, able to cap, da capture data that while the ERP systems cannot manage this data the way that, the way that we can for you, you know, it, they certainly need to be integrated to, and, they, and it's clear to us that this platform is important in order to drive other business decisions 
that your manufacturing and your ERP systems traditionally do not do not deliver to our customers. We have this proven platform. Again, we've done this. It's a singular hardware agnostic platform that um, that can use any technology available today. Is committed to adopt any new technology tomorrow and allow enterprises to address their asset management as a strategic initiative across multiple locations, across multiple asset classes, and across multiple workflows with strong integration into your backend systems. Our team has been around for a long time. Uh, this is not uh, new to us. My background has been in transportation and logistics for 35 years, and that experience certainly um, is, uh, is built into this platform because I was looking for these solutions back when I was responsible for operations and IT solutions at some of the largest transportation and logistics companies in the industry. So our first RFID tag we put on, on vehicles in 1989. Um, so the technology, again, while it lacked standards back then and it lacked um, robustness, it, all that has evolved much as, as has the internet, much as has e-commerce, and much as um, the, the, the whole um, strategy around internet, the Internet of Things. So, um, so with that, I guess uh, that pretty much wraps up our, our formal presentation. I'd, I'd love to hear more from the audience in terms of some of the questions that you might like to have answered or uh, other points of clarification that we might be able to offer to you as you, uh, as you look to address some of your returnable transport item needs. Thank you, Tim. Um, I did see a few questions pop in. Um, can you explain um, a little bit more in detail um, how the customer onboarding process works? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, um, the, the customer, uh, it, it is, it's really interesting because we have uh, candidly not done a very good job up until recently with our outbound marketing to target particular opportunities. All of our opportunities have come inbound via our website and from wonderful partners like Barcodes. So when we get a lead, um, we, uh, we, we, we certainly talk to the customer about their low-hanging fruit. We understand that the platform typically is very extensible to address a lot of the needs of our customers, but there's always three or four in, in, uh, specific needs that they're looking to solve right out of the gate, Lorna. Um, and so what we do is we work with a customer, we'll go in, we will provide a, uh, a site survey service where we can help the customer understand what technology, where to place the technology, and what business workflows we need to enable. We'll complete that site survey and then we'll implement typically a proof of concept for the customer to, to, to make them feel more comfortable that not only have we done this before, but we can do it in such a way to provide them a, a, uh, a rapid return on their investment as they deploy this. We'll run that proof of concept for a period of time, and then we will, we will uh, move to full production where we're training their team, we're re-educating operational staff on the new processes, and we're ultimately looking, talking with the executive team around the financial benefit and the opportunity to expand across multiple locations. 91% of our customers, um, Lorna, have, have actually expanded beyond the initial solution into other, other locations, other asset classes, and multiple workflows. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, I did see another question pop up from Greg. Um, he asked, what are the typical read ranges of passive RFID tags? That's a great question. Uh, clearly, uh, not as strong as they are in active tags, but the passive tags cost, you know, um, again, 90% less. Um, the typical read range on uh, that we're looking for in industrial assets is about 50 feet on a on a passive tag, enough for us to track contents in trailers, for us to move trailers through gates, for us to take a shunt unit as we're moving trailers around the yard. And, uh, and automatically identify those trailers um, as that shunt driver is driving, you know, 20 miles an hour or 25 miles an hour around a yard environment. Um, 50 feet is, is, is our goal. We do have tags that will read much, much longer than that. But um, it, the, the, to do that, what we have to do is increase the size of the tag. So the tag basically is comprised of a chip. Uh, an antenna structure and a, and a substrate that we're mounting or an enclosure that we're mounting to the asset. The antenna, the size of the antenna, largely impacts read range. So uh, if you want a windshield tag on a car, which we do for Carvana, 
that tag will have a reed range of uh, 40 to 50 feet. Uh, trailer tag, about the same size. This is about a three inch by one inch tag. Um, we'll have a reed range of 50 to 65 feet. Smaller tags that we put on linens and towels, which is a returnable asset uh, in the linen, in the hospitality industry, those tags will, will read from about, uh, from, they're much smaller tag uh, sewn into the label of a, of a, of a towel or a bed sheet. Um, they'll, they'll read at about, uh, at about 15 to 20 feet. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. Um, we did get another question from Jay. Um, he said uh, one of their greatest challenges is um, assets returned to vendor, um, which is being replaced. Um, he said it is difficult to capture the replacement asset um, for the vendor sending the asset, so um, they're not utilizing the information we request. So do, you, do we kind of offer a workflow process improvement to this type of situation? Yes, we do. We do, and there's a, that's a, that's a that's actually a pretty common uh, challenge for a lot of customers, and so we we have addressed uh, that as a supply chain requirement, um, and uh, we do have workflows that we can enable to uh, to help the customers address that particular need. That's a really good question. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. Um, I saw another one from William come in. Um, he asked, uh, when placing a passive tag label on a metal background. How are you preventing metal interference? Oh, there's a guy that knows a little bit about RFID. <laughs> that's good. Um, yep. Well, you know, that, 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 that's been a challenge. But now ma manufacturers, like uh, some of the tag manufacturers, you know, Lorna, that we, uh, that we collectively work with, like, like uh, you know, um, the Metalcraft and, uh, and, and HID and others that we're partnered with, they have, they have done a tremendous job in, in researching and developing tags that are built to sit on metal and actually use the metal container instead of interfering with the tag, they actually help accentuate and attenuate the, uh, the performance of that tag. And uh, so as a result, um, on metal tags that do not create issues for us anymore, and that's one of the things, in addition to significant increased capacity in the reader and antenna infrastructure, the tag, um, the way in which uh, chips and, and antennas are mounted on tags to leverage metal as an attenuator has evolved a lot. So we no longer have issues managing on metal tags. And that's one of the reasons why we see a growth, frankly, in chemical containers and air and gas cylinders and propane tanks and beer kegs is that we now have tags that do not have to be um, uh, you know, as, as significantly um, off the metal in order, to get, in order to get viable read rates. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, we did get one from Karen as well. She asked if we'll be doing additional webinars. Uh, definitely, Karen, I know I messaged you privately, but um, would love to hear more feedback on other topics that you'd be interested in. So, um, well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate all the questions. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and everyone, please, you know, reach out um, to me directly via email, um, lmalia at barcodesinc.com. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you very much, Lauren. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Bye, guys. Hope everyone has a good day.